Bentley Phipps, and welcome to our program, Perfecting Me, Becoming More Like Jesus. I'm so glad you've joined us. My guests today on our program are J.D. Quinn, 3ABN Pastoral Ministries Manager, George Florimond, Pastor of the West Park Seventh-day Adventist Church, and Mrs. Adley Campos, Speaker and President of Family Wellbeing International. You'll hear from them a little later. Who can forget when the Boston Marathon bombings rocked the nation in April 2013? The images that emerged from that scene of bloody chaos were powerful, and yet even more powerful than the evil that took place were the stories of powerful kindness that began to rise out of the dust and despair to lift our spirits. I want to tell you about Carlos Arendondo. He made the national news twice, actually. The first time was when he found out his son had been killed in Iraq. Shocked by grief, he was devastated and reckless. He took, in his van, he took a gas can and propane torch, and he began splashing gasoline everywhere. The Marines who delivered the news of his son's death tried to helplessly talk him out of his frenzy, but the van exploded in flames. Carlos was pulled out of the van, but spent the next part of his life strapped to a hospital bed, unconscious at first, and then awake to this experience of the agony of a burn victim, the bandages, the feeling of his dead skin being pulled off. After he recovered from his burns, he also lost another son to suicide. The second time Carlos made the national news was after the Boston Marathon bombings. In the desperate seconds following the attack, Carlos acted on instinct, tearing up pieces of a sweater he found on the ground. He began to use them as tourniquets on the bloody stumps of amputees, even retying them when they fell off. He did his best to minimize the horror by reassuring victims that they would all be okay. And he was hiding the worst of their injuries from them while he got them help. Though carrying his own burden of pain, Carlos forgot about himself, his acts of kindness, and in the process, he saved lives. Such is the power of kindness, a dimension of God's character. There's something about us as human beings that responds to an act of kindness like nothing else. After all, we are only flesh and blood, aren't we? We're not steel and iron. We are, for the most part, soft tissue. We are fragile, so fragile, in fact, that sometimes something as simple as a kind word, a kind act, a kind gesture can make all the difference in the world. A man told a story about how, not long after he had graduated college, a man approached him in a restaurant. He had known the man from high school well enough to remember his face, if not his name, but he remembered him. The man walked up and extended his hand. Hi, Jack, he said. Remember me? Joey Smith from the 10th grade. Yeah, Jack said. Now I do. How are you? I'm doing okay, Joey said. And that has a lot to do with you. With me? What do you mean? Yes, Joey said. In fact, I can honestly say that if it were not for you, I doubt I would even be standing here. No, I know that I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't even be alive. Jack was stunned and he looked at him and asked, what are you talking about? I grew up in a dysfunctional family, Joey said. My father was manically abusive, left my mother with three children. We never saw him again. I was the oldest of three. And though I often caught the brunt of his abuse, I still felt something lacking in my life without him there. Meanwhile, my mother struggled to make ends meet. And she was always stressed and out of sorts. Home life was miserable. I was struggling with drugs and alcohol, and I was on the verge of dropping out of school. The thing was, I really didn't care. In fact, I didn't care about much of anything. I was constantly depressed. From the time I was 15, barely a day went by when I wasn't thinking about suicide. I was a mess. Then, well, 
a whole train of bad things happened to me and I just couldn't take it anymore. He said, I wish that I were dead and I finally decided to go ahead and do it and kill myself. I really meant it this time, he said, and I went to a hardware store after school, bought a rope, threw it in my backpack and was headed home. I was determined to hang myself in my room so that my mother would walk in and be the first to see me dead. Ouch, Jack said, listening. Well, Joey continued, here is where you come in. I don't even know if you remember, but I was walking home past the school and you came up to me and just very kindly said, hi, Joey, how are you? I didn't even think that you knew who I was, much less my name. But we chatted and you invited me over to your house. We hung out in your room for a couple of hours playing video games. You probably don't even remember any of this, do you? Jack kind of shrugged, well, I think, well, I do maybe vaguely a little. It doesn't matter. He said, what matters is that my mood completely changed that day. I walked up out of your house and I threw the rope into the first dumpster I came to and I moved on. He said, I never again contemplated suicide. He said, I can't say my life has been great, but things have gotten better for me. The thing is, I always wanted to thank you for the kindness you showed me that day. It saved my life. Well, we might not all be suicidal teenagers, but we have flesh and blood and even more so, we are all emotional creatures. Our emotions easily drive us to action even more than our reason does. Maybe you can think back to a time someone did something kind for you and you've never forgotten about it. Think back to a time when someone was unkind to you and you've forgotten about that. Now think about a time, if you can, when you were kind to someone else just for the sake of being kind. You weren't trying to get something from them. You were just being kind for the sake of being kind. You remember how that kindness made you feel? Everyone has heard of the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do to you. Oh, what kind of world would we live in if everybody live that way. If everybody was kind, there'd be no such thing as all the drugs and wars. You could leave your doors unlocked. Always seek to be kind. I want you to watch this video made possible by our friends at CBN News, showing kindness in action. No matter how strong your faith or how positive your outlook, when a family welcomes a child with a disability into their lives, it's common to feel overwhelmed, sad, even to question God. If and when that initial reaction fades, we live in a country with resources available to provide children with disabilities a full life and parents the necessary support and education to care for them. But what if you have that child in a part of the world where you have no support, no idea what's wrong, and no idea how to help? I take care of him, and later he should help me learn a skill, become a man normally. But this isn't normal. In Haiti, parents often view a disabled child as a problem to be fixed. They go from hospital to hospital, trying to find the doctor who can make their child like all of the others. Haitian doctors often don't want to give parents the truth because they know what's likely to happen next. No doctor wants to tell you because they know in Haiti how bad our situation is. If they tell this friend that's true, they're going to chop those kids in the hospital or anywhere. They're not going to love them anymore. Pepito knows firsthand the challenges of raising a child with a disability here. In 2009, his son Chris Jerry was born with severe cerebral palsy. Pepito's wife died in childbirth leaving him with a three-pound, incredibly sick baby boy to raise on his own. 
Two and a half years passed before he truly learned what he needed to know about taking care of his son. I had never worked with a widowed father before, and here he was with his two and a half year old with no intention of wanting to give him away to an orphanage. And that would have been so easy for him. A lot of orphanages would have said yes because he was a widowed father and Chris Jerry's disabilities are so severe. He wanted to raise his son. He wanted to provide for his son. He wanted to take care and be there and love his son um, forever. Heather Meyer Gabo moved to Haiti in 2010 with a background in special needs. She was helping at an orphanage when Pepito showed up seeking answers about his son. The two worked together to find Chris Jerry the right medical care. They grew so close that they married in 2012. The following year, they took their combined passion for the special needs community and started Footprints of the Sun. Our mission is educated these parents to love their kids, help them, and do what they need. I believe it's a rescue mission, especially for the little children, the, the babies that we get. Um, I just feel as though the parents are at that turning point of they don't know what to do with their child. And I feel like sometimes we get to them just in time, just in time before they're losing hope, before they're so desperate that they'll leave that child um, at a hospital or they'll leave that child um, with a grandparent. Haiti's voodoo culture often works against Heather and Pepito's efforts. That's because families often turn first to voodoo priests for help because of their own beliefs or pressure from family. Some family judge them because they don't know what to do it, but some of them did it and when everybody says no, and they see, oh, there's no answer for this. They just give up because the way they tell them to go is not the right way. So they come back. When we come in, we're just like, just embrace it. Let's, let's do this together. Let's educate your child. Let's get therapy for your child. But most importantly, let's just create a family that loves this child. It's sad. And it's really, really like slow process. It is slow process for them to give up and like fixing and going to raising. Footprints of the Sun is breaking new ground this year. They've built a school to provide education for children with disabilities. This year we're going to have three classrooms. Um, we'll have a two to three year old level classroom. That doesn't mean all the children will be two to three years old. And then we're going to have um, a three to four year old classroom. And then one unique classroom that we're going to open this year is a sensory classroom. And that's geared for um, children with autism and severe autism and severe ADHD. Heather and Pepito don't plan to stop there. Their land gives them room to grow and one day they hope to reach each child in the community. This has been my like biggest dream since I moved to Haiti is to have um, an inclusion school of typical functioning children and children with disabilities learning together in the same environment. Until that dream becomes reality, Heather and Pepito will work among Haiti's special needs community through education, encouragement, and support, taking it one family at a time. Caitlin Burke, CBN News, Terrier Rouge, Haiti. Joining us again are my guests, J.D. Quinn, Adley Campos, and Pastor George Florman. You know, kindness is a dimension of the character of God. Uh, his loving kindness is something that we all desperately need and are grateful for. But we also are blessed to have kindness shown to us all through our lives, little acts of kindness, sometimes big acts of kindness. Uh, I always tell people that probably the biggest act of kindness I've ever experienced is uh, when my wife said, yes, I will marry you. <laughs> <laughs> to me, that was an act of kindness. Uh, but, J.D., I want to start with you. Uh, what is kindness to you? And have, do you have any experiences that you can recall of special acts of kindness or a special act of kindness that was shown to you? Well, I, I just, uh, it puts joy in my heart whenever the word kindness comes in because I love that word. Yeah. I just, uh, and I, I was thinking as we were uh, uh, thinking earlier, the first time, the first act of kindness that I think that I really experienced is when I was probably about 12, 13 years old. I was raised on a mm. farm and all and on a farm, all you want to do is drive. So I, I already learned how to drive a tractor, but now it's time to drive a car. Mm. And I went to my grand, he says, well, not yet, son. You're just not quite old enough. You're not mature enough. 
So that didn't work. So then I go see my uh, grandmother. <laughs> and my grandmother, my mother's side, she had a brand new Buick. Oh, it was long and it was sleek and it was just so shiny. Oh, I could see myself behind that uh, wheel. Mm. And I I just uh, wasn't begging, but I was pulling all the tools out of the box to try to get the... Yeah. And bless her heart, she came, would you like to drive my car? Uh, oh, I'll never forget. That was a and beautiful... As I sat behind uh -huh. not knowing what to do, uh -huh. other than just... Just pull it, put it in gear, and go. Yes. But that's her little heart. I was starting and stopping and starting and squealing and everything. But that precious face of hers, as I kept looking over there, scared she was going to tell me to stop and get out. Yeah. There was this beautiful kindness in her eyes. Well, that Jay was a teachable moment. Well, J.D., I'm glad. I, uh -huh. Go ahead. And I just, uh, I think that that put something instilled in me. Yes. Because <laughs> I... I think that kindness is one of those gifts that's reciprocal. Yes, yes. If you're kind to other people, we're kind to you. Yeah. Well, I, I really thought you were going someplace else with that story, J.D. I thought the car was going to be a wreck and she was going to be nice anyway. Uh <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's the story. Because, <laughs> hey, that's probably happened to some of us. I know it's happened to me where a nice person lent me their nice car and I wrecked you know, scraped it, but they were gracious yep. and they were kind. Praise the Lord, you know. Adley, how about you? Uh, can you think of an act of kindness uh, that uh, really taught you what kindness was all about? Yes. When I was working at the General Conference in the Ministerial Association, we traveled to India. And uh, in India, I like to try everything that is offered to me. I tried a dilled mango, mm. and that made me very, very sick. I oh. was dying in a matter of hours. Oh. And the pastor's uh, wife, uh, he was one of the vice presidents at the general conference at the time, was traveling with us, Mrs. Cooper. She stayed by my bedside all night long, wow. taking care of me. She didn't have to do that. Yes. But out of the kindness of her heart, she spent the whole night with me, and I was able to return home well. Praise the Lord. That is something that you never, ever you forget. Never forget. My voice breaks whenever I think of that kindness that she showed to me at a time when you need it the most, when you're not feeling well and you're away from home. Yes. How about you, Pastor George? Um, I, you know, I've been blessed by God to have some uh, wonderful acts of kindness done to me. Uh, but the ones that stick out the most in my mind are the ones that uh, you didn't ask for or you didn't even know who performed them for you. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was uh, an undergraduate, uh, this is one of the ones that sticks out the most in my mind, I was getting ready to uh, try to financially clear for one of these semesters. Mm -hmm. And the school I went to, Usually at the beginning of the year, the, the lines are long. And by the time you get to the front of the line, right. uh, it, you know, if you don't have all your things together, they usually send you to the back of the line. Uh, yeah. And so here I was trying to clear financially, and I knew that I was missing some funds. Mm. And so when I got to the front of the line, uh, I gave the lady my name, and she kept saying, there's something funny about your last name. And I said to her, I know. My last name is a long, funny name, but still, she kept saying, there's something funny about your name, and she couldn't put her finger on it. And eventually, she came back, and it was an envelope with my name on it. Didn't know who it came from. To this day, I don't know who it came from. Wow. But that was enough for me to 70, to clear by 70% and to get into uh, the semester for that year. And so, uh, you know, that taught me that God requires of us, it requires of us to show acts of kindness, even when you don't know, when the other person that do, do, don't know, I'm sorry, yes. um, who it is yeah. that is that is doing that for them. And so uh, that was my experience. Well, kindness is necessary, not only for our salvation, because it was an act of kindness for Jesus to come to this earth. Amen. And, and kindness is necessary for us to have in our character to be saved. If we want to resemble Christ, 
we are going to have to learn to be kind. Uh, JD, we live in, in a world where kindness is at a premium. It, it's hard to find it these days, especially, oh my goodness, in, in the, in the, on the news today, all we see sometimes are these terrible acts of unkindness. Uh, do you see uh, that it is a time, we are living in a time when we need to try to project and teach people how to be more kind? Even in churches, I, 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 my prayer is that churches will be a place where people will see kindness all around, but sometimes, uh, sometimes it isn't, you know. Uh, sometimes people sit in the, in the seat in the church and, and a visitor comes in and they're not really kind, <laughs> you know? Do you think we need to do more, uh, JD, to really help people learn and grow to be more kind? Oh, I certainly do. I mean, I'm, I, I love being able to be the first one to go up and hug someone's neck and, yeah. and welcome to our church. And our church here in uh, Thompsonville is a loving church. Yes. And we love to have visitors, and we can't wait to go up and welcome them, uh, learn something about them. But yes, I do believe that we're living in the latter times of this earth's history. And now more than ever, we need to be kind. And I think that that's something that's just in you. Uh, there's people that probably uh, can use a word of kindness that will hopefully let them see, you know, the, the product of your church. Yes. And that they would want it accordingly. Yes. But no, I believe hardly in kindness. I have uh, a story that I often tell about Captain John Smith. You remember Captain John Smith? It, it, uh, I, I presume it's a true story. Apparently, John Smith took Pocahontas back with him to England to show off this beautiful Native American woman. And uh, everyone was so taken with Pocahontas. And Pocahontas uh, was approached by Captain John Smith and he actually asked her to marry him. And uh, she said, give me a little time to think about it. And she thought on it. And when they came back together, she said to him, I have only one question for you. Are you kind? Mm -hmm. Are you kind? If we had more kindness in our marriages, for example, if we showed this character of Christ, of kindness in our marriages, marriage would be heaven on earth just for Amen. that one little yes. blessing, that one little blessing of kindness. Yeah. What do you think about that, uh, Adley? Oh, I think it's very important. I was holding an evangelistic meeting in uh, Mexico City, and uh, there was a lady that was seemed to be very kind at church. Mm. She would greet everyone. She would be very friendly to everyone. But her <laughs> daughters came to see me because she was the opposite at home. Oh. <laughs> and when I visited her and spoke with her, she came to recognize that she was failing at the most important place, which was her home. Yes. Her husband, 25 years listening to the message, would not accept it. But when she finally understood that the first place where she needed to be kind and graceful and loving was at home, and she changed her mm. attitude. Mm. That man came to church, mm. and soon he was baptized. Mm. When I asked him why finally he had made that decision, he said, because finally my wife is showing what she pretends at church oh. in the home. Wow. So that's the first place where we need to start being kind to each other. Yeah. You know, one of the tests of whether a person is kind or not is whether they refrain from words and acts of recrimination. Did mm. you, when, when someone has hurt you and you have the character of Christ in you, you don't strike back. You don't, you don't indulge in words and acts of recrimination because mm -hmm. you, if you feel the need 
to injure someone else because they have injured mm. you, you need that character dimension of Jesus. You need to learn to be Christ-like and to be kind. I appreciate you all being so much with me today and talking about this very important trait. May God continue to bless us as we strive to be kind. What can we do about the unfairness of life? It's unrealistic to think we can eradicate injustice and create a world that is fair to everyone. But we can do our part. We can change our little part of the world. A story from the Civil War tells of a man who traveled for days on horseback to find General Ulysses S. Grant. He asked to see the general and was finally allowed into the presence of that great general. He stated his name and his mission. He had come to plead for the life of one named Frederick Stone, a soldier who was to be executed for the crime of desertion. Grant responded by saying that just because he had come to plead for the life of a great friend, he wasn't going to commute the death sentence. A great friend, the man responded. I have no greater enemy than Frederick Stone. General Grant was stunned. He hesitated for a few moments and then he said, you would come all this way not for a friend, but for an enemy? Am I hearing that correctly? <laughs> yes, sir, he said. Grant looked at him and said, you know, for a man who would ride four days in dangerous territory, all of that to plead the life of an enemy, to plead the life for the life of someone who is his enemy, I will grant the request. It's the easiest thing to show love and kindness to those who are part of our families but to show kindness to an enemy is really something special. I'm Wendley Phipps. Thank you for being with us. And remember, to be a Christian means to be Christ-like.